Today, we're diving deep into the world of data center cooling. How do we bring liquid cooling into this data center environment? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into the world of data center cooling, specifically how we're moving beyond air and embracing the power of liquid cooling. As CPUs and GPUs become more power hungry, they generate more heat. It's a simple equation, more power in, more heat out. And while air cooling has served us well for a long time, it's starting to hit its limits. It's worth noting that AMD and Nvidia both are putting out some very high power products right now. The latest generation of GPU and CPU coming out have very high power draws and as a result have very high cooling requirements. And this is why we have a lot of vendors now trying to provide these liquid cooled solutions because air cooled just doesn't keep up to these latest products. There are some places where full racks of equipment have gone down to just a couple of chassis and a whole rack because really that's all the power and cooling allows for. What a waste of resources to rent an entire rack of co-location space and only put in maybe eight rack units of equipment and you've maxed out the power and heat of that rack. And this is why we're looking to direct to chip liquid cooled solutions. Think about it. Air just isn't the most efficient way to move heat. Gamers have known this for years. Liquid cooling solutions in gaming PCs offers far superior performance compared to air coolers and fans. They allow for overclocking and pushing hardware to its limits. But the kind of scale we're talking about at data centers is on a whole different level. Your typical gaming PC might draw 300 to 500 watts while gaming, and in a high-end gaming rig, it can easily hit 1,000 watts or more. Now, that's a lot of heat to dissipate. Now imagine that multiplied by dozens of computers packed into a single rack. We're talking power draws of up to 15, 35 kilowatts, and even 70 kilowatts per rack. These racks filled with anywhere from 40 to 100 servers become like furnace blasting hot air. Air cooling alone just can't keep up. So the question becomes, how do we bring liquid cooling into this data center environment? Well, it sounds a little crazy, right? Liquid and electronics, aren't they a bad mix? Well, not necessarily. Ironically, water is often already present above your data center. Think about it. There's water, sewer pipes, sprinkler systems, rooftop HVAC, and other examples. And the glycol water-based solutions which we'll talk about are built to a very high standard. So let's dive in. The basic idea is pretty simple. Liquid is piped into manifolds within the rack, and each server has a small dripless connection to hook up to each of the hoses. These dripless connectors are designed to prevent any leaks whatsoever, and inside the server there are small pipes that carry liquid directly to the CPU or a plate on it, and sometimes to the GPU. Often there's still some air cooling involved and other components on their motherboard are getting cooled by air, but liquid handles often 60 to 80% of the heat removal. The liquid enters the server cooler than the components, then it draws the heat away from the components and the liquid leaves hotter than the components, having absorbed the heat. Now here's a crucial point. The cooler liquid might still feel hot to the touch, but it only needs to be cooler than the components that it's actually cooling. This concept is important because as we'll see later, slightly warmer liquid can still be used to cool down servers before it's sent back to chillers to cool down on the roof. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first talk about the different types of direct to chip liquid cooling. First up is single phase cooling. In this method, a liquid, often a water glycol mixture, is pumped through cold plates attached directly to the heat generating components on the CPU and GPU. This fluid absorbs the heat and then it circulates to a heat exchanger where the heat is released. Single phase cooling is effective and relatively simple to implement compared to other methods. However, it's not quite as efficient as two phase cooling, which we'll discuss next. And although it's rare, there can still occasionally be a liquid leak inside a server server rack. Now let's talk about two-phase cooling. This is a technique that uses a fluid with a very low boiling point. Then when the fluid comes into contact with the hot chip, it basically boils or turns into vapor. This phase change from liquid to vapor, it absorbs a huge amount of the heat and the vapor is then condensed back into a liquid back at the heat exchanger and the cycle repeats. Two-phase cooling is incredibly efficient, offering superior heat removal due to the latent heat of vaporization. 
It can handle much higher heat densities, making it ideal for ultra high performance processors and GPUs. The downside is a two phase system is slightly more complex, requiring a slightly more sophisticated design and control. And just like single phase, two phase cooling also has the potential to leaks. To add to that, a lot of these two phase solutions are actually pressurized. So what exactly happens to the hot liquid or vapor after it leaves the server? In many solutions, there's a thing called a heat exchanger. Different companies use different titles, but basically this will be mounted in the rack or sometimes it'll be mounted at the end of the row. Sometimes this exchanger will expel hot air out to the room, but more often it's cooled using the data center's existing HVAC infrastructure. The key here is that the slightly warmed water coming out of the HVAC system is still cooler than the chips inside the server. This allows you to cool even more components before you're sending that water back to the chiller to be cooled on the roof or wherever your chillers are. This increases overall efficiency. It's worth noting that what we're not talking about is water coming in from the public water system, washing across servers, and then going back out to the sewer. These are closed loop systems, so although they're using liquid, they're not necessarily consuming huge amounts of water like a factory. These liquid systems get switched out every few years. Finally, let's talk about immersion cooling. This is where an entire rack full of equipment will be immersed in a dielectric oil bath. These servers sit bathed in a clear mineral oil-like substance. And although it may sound futuristic, this is actually a fairly old technology. Think about the transformers on your utility poles. Many of them are actually immersed in a similar oil up there on the pole because liquid is so much better than air for cooling. Immersion cooling is extremely efficient, but it comes with its own set of challenges. It often requires a re-engineering of existing data centers to accommodate the tanks, and some hardware vendors are hesitant to warranty their equipment for this type of use. There are also smaller details to consider, like making sure that there are no adhesive labels on any of the equipment because those will start to come off in the liquid. And there's some other non-standard considerations when you're doing this solution. Now, one day we might see a future where all the computers are submerged in liquid. But right now, this method isn't totally widespread. I've shown different images here from different vendors, and I wanna be clear that I'm not necessarily endorsing any one vendor that you should go to for your solution. However, all the vendors I've shown in this video are reputable and solid industry players. Now, if you're interested in implementing these types of solutions or you just have general questions, reach out to me, cupofjoevfx at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Of course, you can leave a comment below and I'll just respond to that. I'll see you in the next video.